notes for you. We're long friends. I'm going to need some notes. You don't need <laughs> One of the me. nicest guys around, David Lee Murphy, is here. Clap your hands to my friend David Lee Murphy. Thank you. I, you and I got I to know each other. Crowd. Right? This crowd up here is awesome. You mean these people? Yeah. These are my friends. I know. They're rocking. They're all radio people. Can you believe that? I love it. <laughs> it's the first time you've been up in the studio, huh? It is. Yeah. I've been trying to get you up here for a bit. Yeah. Thanks for having me. For years. I've been trying to get you up here. Really? Yeah. You didn't know because I was just, I didn't. I would have come. I was a just lot praying. Sooner. Yeah. David Lee Murphy's here. It might be Obviously, there's this one. But let me tell you, this song here Everything's is the jam. Thank you. So good. I lo- Thank you. And I don't just love it today. I've been loving this song for a long time. Man, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. David Lee Murphy in the studio came over at the house. We talked for a long time, for like an hour. Yeah. We became best friends, I think. Did you think that? I had a great time. Yeah. yeah. I was like, we're best friends. I came back and told everybody we're best friends. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I follow, I'm follow. i following you on Instagram now. Are you? Yeah. Just okay. as best friends do. I just, I just, I, I, I'm new to Instagram. My son goes, Dad, you need to get on Instagram because I'm, I, I'm just new to it. So I saw the picture of you, you know, hooking up your My faucet the other day. What do you mean about that? Yeah, I like, do that all the time. He's so manly, right? Yeah. yeah. I was worried. It stuck. My, you know, you get your faucet stuck, you know, the hose pipe stuck on the faucet. Let me tell you about these water hoses. You get a new water hose. If you don't completely unroll it, you will get a mean kink. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then you got yeah. you got to go buy a new hose. And if you don't get it on there right, you you know you flood everything. Us men are talking hose. man stuff right yeah. now. Everybody check out. Yeah. Men are talking man yeah. stuff here. <laughs> David, David Lee Murphy's here. Gardening. Yeah, don't worry about us. We're just talking man stuff. <laughs> By the way, Amy, did you know that David Lee Murphy wrote this one? Yes, I did actually. Big green tractor. We can go slow. Tractor stuff. I, I know the story too. I don't know. Maybe I learned that on the podcast. Yeah. What's the story? What's the story about this one? You were riding Big your tractor, green tractor one night, yeah. right? Amy, let yeah. our guest tell a story, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I'll when, I, I'll when I'm up. on the road, when I'm on the road and running around, my farm grows up. I've probably got you know five foot blackberry bushes sitting out there right now. I need to cut down, not bushes, you know, sticker bushes, all that stuff. Anyway, I was I was out there bush hogging one night, you know, which is in tractor jargon, uh, you just put the big mower down on the just, tractor and just go cut everything down. So I was riding around out there one night, had my headlights on on my tractor, and and uh, that little idea just popped into my head. And uh, take you for a ride on my big green tractor. Got in like the next day, and a uh, buddy of mine, Jim Collins, who had written, she thinks my tractor's sexy. And uh, my thing is, well, I figure he had tractor experience. So I said, hey, man, you want to write another tractor song? And he was like, yeah. So we wrote that song, and fortunately, Jason cut it. Yeah, then you got rich again. I didn't. Are we getting paid for this? This? <laughs> no. Uh, how about this one? You know, he wrote this one here? Anywhere with you? Man. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't. Yeah. Tell me this story. Yeah, Jam. Great job. Well, uh, part of the story was uh, we had, my son was doing a bike trip across the U.S. after the, the uh, flood in Nashville. He did a, a charity event to raise money. And uh, they they were stopped in Idaho for a day or two, and so we flew out there, rented one of those vans that's got like, uh, you know, Mount Rushmore and an Eagle, you know, the camper. <laughs> you know, we rented one in Boise, went up and stayed in the mountains for a couple of days, and I just sitting up there, went through these little towns like Idaho City, Idaho, and beautiful little towns, and uh, just got a bunch of cool little Idaho ideas and. Send a postcard back from Idaho, you know, it's in that line. Man, look at that. Well, I'll go so, it's in there somewhere. Do you know who wrote this one, Abe? Are you gonna kiss me or not? Did not. David Lee Murphy wrote this one, yeah. too. Look at this. Look at you, just that writing was, all this. That was me and Jim, and the other one was uh, me and Ben Hayslip and Jimmy Yuri. So, I guess my question is, you know, this song has lasted so much the test of time that we still play it today. It might be. I play this today and people still go, that's my jam. Like today. <laughs> yeah. People still go, that's my jam. Right, I mean, guys? Yeah. Awesome. yeah. I love that. So, do you still feel good? Do uh, you still like playing that song after all these years? I love it. You still do? I love it. Some I mean, of these artists, they go, man, I don't like playing those songs. No, I love I love, I love, love the heck out of it. And lately, uh, having, I've been out doing some shows with Kenny. And uh, we do, we've done that show with Kenny. And man, that is fun. I bet you they sing that song back so loud 
It's pretty cool. 50,000 people singing. Because if you don't know all the words to this song, you're not my friend. That's what I feel like in my uh, life. Yeah, if you don't know all these words. It's a fun one. It's a fun one to do. And you wrote that. That's an interesting story too, huh? Like that was a like a, a you got on the phone. Well, I I wrote that the second day, the morning after we started recording my first album out with a bang, and uh, I had the I had the title yeah, pick a guitar for the song, yeah. and um, I was sitting at the kitchen table. I'm playing this thing, and I was you know I was like, damn man, I like that that groove, and uh, I remember I had this little. Um, idea written in one of those spiral notebooks, you know, a yellow spiral notebooks, dust on the bottle. And um, I think I just went, might be a little dust on the bottle. And and then I thought about this guy from my hometown named Creel Williams who made homemade wine, and the story just fell out. That's a real dude, huh, old Creole? So yeah. he's, how, yeah, how does he feel about he's it? He's dead now. <laughs> but I mean, was he alive he's when dead. he wrote it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, he's dead. But yeah. His sisters and his sisters... Road. Thought it was pretty cool. He used to camp with my cousin at Crab Orchard Lake in Southern Illinois. Oh, they used to go that? camping. I'd you set up a tent and leave it there all summer. You guys were crazy. <laughs> oh, Korea. You want to play that for us? You mind? Yeah. You, you guys want to hear that? Yes. Ooh, yeah, that'd David be Lee Murphy. Let's see if I can. This early, I'm it gonna is. try to choke it out here. This early. I've said that before. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I can do this. Okay. <laughs> Creo Williams lived down a dirt road, made homemade wine like nobody I know. I dropped by one Friday night and said, Can you help me, Creo? Got a little girl waiting on me and I wanna treat her right, he said. I got what you need, son of a step down in the cellar. He reached through the cobwebs as it turned on the light, he said. It might be a little dust on the bottle Don't let it fool you about what's inside It might be a little dust on the bottle well, It's one of those things I get sweeter with time You were sitting in the porch swing as I pulled up the driveway My old heart was racing as you climbed inside we slid over real close and we drove down to the lake road. I watched the sun fade in that big red sky. I reached under the front seat and said, Now here's something special. It's just been waiting for a night like tonight. But it might be a little dust on the bottle. Don't let it fool you about what's inside. It might be a little dust on the bottle And it's one of those things that gets sweeter with time You're still with me And we've made some memories After all these years there's one thing I find and some say good love, well it's like a fine wine It keeps getting better as the days go by But might be a little dust on the bottle Don't let it fool you about what's inside It might be a little dust on the bottle it's one of those things I get sweeter with time Here's a big ending Come on! <laughs> Come on! That's awesome! <laughs> Listen, That's pretty cool Yeah, you think? <laughs> yeah Holy David Lee Murphy's in studio right now Let me tell you Eddie and I are such music nerds that A bit we get to be around a lot of great music and a lot of cool things, and we become jaded. However, that being said, while you were playing, Eddie and I looked at each other and exchanged a glance like, 
this is freaking cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> During that. I had a big smile on my face. That was all. Thank listen, you. that was really cool. Thanks. That was cool. Man. Man, I'm just thinking of like all my friends back in the day. Like they would be so, because that was our jam. I'm thinking of this one, my one friend in particular. I feel like I have to give him a shout out because he sang your song all the time. Peter Wilcox. No idea if he's listening. Yeah. I have no idea what he's doing right now. But like that, the time time you're playing, that's all I thought about was my that friend from my like. Day. Yeah, my friend from like I mean, when people high. tell me stories like that, it's, it's, it's a <laughs> great. It's a great big kick for me. Yeah. Who, who'd have thought a song you were just writing at the kitchen table would turn into the song of people's childhoods mm-hmm. and thank lives? God, I mean, thank God. I mean, you know, everybody, all songwriters, all of us here in um, Nashville want to write one of those songs like Help Me Make It Through the Night or, you know, For the Good Times or, you know, one of those classic songs. And, uh, you just pray, hopefully, one of these days, one of your songs will turn out to be. Hope I hope that one turns out to be like that. That too, one is so. like that. Are you mm-hmm. kidding me? Come 100%. on. 100%. You know, I was worried before I got to meet him because all my friends were like, man, he is the nicest guy. Like my songwriter friends. I was like, how can he be nice with that cool hair? Most guys <laughs> with cool hair are not that nice. They're, you know, they're like rock stars. You're uh, not, you, live up to, you live up to the hype, my friend. Cool. Then you say hi to me when we're not even doing work events. I'm like, he doesn't know who I am. And you're like, what up, Bobby? And I'm like, oh, he does. <laughs> I appreciate that. How about this new song, which I, I love. Everything's going to be all right. How did this come about with you you know, uh, putting some music out again, with Kenny being a part of it? Yeah, we actually wrote that song right across the street. And uh, uh, that long story with uh, putting the record together with Kenny, you know, it goes back a couple of years. And Kenny and I have been friends and, you know, I've written songs for him over the years and um uh, he called one day and uh i t- i don't know i probably told this told you this story a million times but uh he called up one night and goes man you need to make another record so over the course of a year or two we put this we picked a bunch of songs and went in the studio and recorded and um so we had our record picked out and then i wrote this song and we couldn't figure out what because we already had our record close to done and um we all really liked the song. Kenny liked the song, and he was thinking about doing it for one of his projects. And um, it just it ended up working out to where it was mine. So uh, I was I was happy about that. And then having him sing on the second verse even made it better. Do you have to ask him, or did he say I would like to sing on the song? No, I, I mean he 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 was he suggested singing on the song because he loved it. But of course, you know what am I going to say? No, Kenny. <laughs> No, nah, man. So Thank good. you. Uh, <laughs> First time I heard it, when I heard that guitar riff, that fan, 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 that, yeah. I was like, what is it? I'm drawn in. And the message, yeah. like, come on. And nobody's got to worry about nothing. Don't I mean, you're back, top of the charts. Man, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're having fun. We're having a lot of fun. And what are you? You're back. You got your book. No, <laughs> this, is not, this is not about Man. me. This is not about me. This, well, I get I get four and a half other hours to talk about me. That's sweet though that you tried to like take it off of you. Who and told put you it to say him? that? Who told you to say that? No, I just heard through the grapevine. That, don't, don't uh, listen. To you're grapevine. rocking. Don't listen to grapevine. Right. They don't know. They don't know what we're going through. Us artists, us struggling yeah. artists, us tortured artists, David Lee Murphy and Bobby Bones ourselves. Creative. That's right. People. I'm trying That's to write awesome. me a dust on the bottle. Been working on it. You got, got yourself a Creole Yeah, well, no, I, mean, I got a little something called Dirt on the Can I've been working Dirt. on. It. Yeah, I just a little, you know, I'll release that one day. I'm going to play. Everything's going to be all right. And I just want to say thank you for being a thank nice you, dude to me thank on you. and off the air. What'd you Touch laughing it. at? Dirt on the Can. What? It's There's a little like, something I've been working on. I know. I can't wait to hear it. You know? <laughs> all right. David Lee Murphy. Appreciate that. And hopefully I'll see you soon. I got a feeling. I got a feeling we will. He's a big fan of the Raging it. Idiots. He watched his side stage one day. Yeah. I, I was there. He's, I saw he's not a big fan. I'm just kidding. But <laughs> no, he was, was. That's the first no, time we ever met him. That's the first that's time right. I remember because I was side stage and they saw you and they were sort of like, that's David Lee Murphy. That's David Lee. Do you yeah. see that guy right there? He's don't, don't, watching. Don't make me look like a nerd right now. Let me talk to my friend David Lee Murphy. Don't look like a nerd. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. well, I, I was totally cool. I was like, that's I remember we were in Virginia. I was with Toby. Yeah. Yes. I was with Toby. That's exactly. We were Jiffy Lube. Or as he makes me call him, Mr. Keith. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, he was out riding with Toby and he and yeah. I walked over, I said, Hey, I said, uh, Mr. David Lee Murphy, I'm a big fan. And he's like, I just watched you play. And I was like, I'm sorry, but I'm a big fan anyway. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really good. Well, I listen, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks for waking Thanks for up. David me. Lee Murphy, everybody, here on the Bobby Bone Show. Wow. Bobby Bone.